Hi everyone, I'm Shane Engstrom, the co-director of Outfilm Connecticut, and we're joined today with um, some of the filmmakers from the Gay Shorts program. Uh, welcome guys, how are you all doing? Oh, good. good, thank you. Good, yeah. And we, uh, we have guests from California, we have guests from Greece. Um, first off, we have um, Matt Mitchell, um, yeah. who did the film Closets Keep Suburban Boys Home. Um, we have Ruben Navarro, uh, who created the film of Hearts and Castles, and Tenassis Simpinis, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, from <laughs> Greece, who did Escaping the Fragile Planet. So I think uh, we'll maybe just start with, with Matt because he's our alumni. He was, uh, mm. he was with us last um, October in our festival. He, he did another film um, called Public Life. He was the writer of that film. Um, so Matt, how are you doing? Great, it's great, great to be back. Yeah, it's um, so amazing to kind of come full circle with this because um, it was, Sort of the one of the last festivals for public life, uh, the last Q and A sessions, and now this is the last um, stop for closets keep suburban boys home. Uh, but when I was doing the Q and A for public life, I remember bringing up that I was working on this other film. Um, so now it feels amazing to kind of bring it all back full circle. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, um, you've been very busy. Um, I mean, you you wrote Public Life. You yeah. You did this film. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been doing a lot of acting, mm -hmm. writing. Um, is this your is this your debut film as a as a director? It is. Yeah, yeah. It's my my debut project directing. It's an amazing uh, experience and working with uh, Felipe Vargas, who's my DP on it. He's an incredible director as well. So getting him to uh, sort of coach me whenever I was uh, inexperienced was incredible. But yeah, debut. Great. So uh, tell us a little bit more about this story and why it was important for you to tell this story. Yeah, uh, Closets Keep Suburban Boys Home is the story of two boys in closeted suburbia um, kind of discovering their sexuality and it's told in sort of a non-linear fashion as a way of um, realizing that sometimes you meet, you can fall in love multiple times with different people and sort of the similarities of those situations intertwine more so than you would maybe be happy with. Um, and yeah, it came about because I'm a huge fan of Keith Haring and his artwork and I was reading his journal and he has all these, um, I guess you would call it stream of conscious, <coughs> sorry, stream of consciousness poems uh, where he'll write down and he was writing this one really long poem and at one point he wrote, Closets Keep Suburb Boys Home. Uh, and I just found that sentence so incredibly profound. Um, so I linked into to suburban boys because it was easier to say, and then just crafted a story out of that. Uh, yeah, I was wondering about the origin of the title. I was wondering if it was some sort of statement on suburbia or... Yeah, I mean, I think uh, to me it was so profound because I think, uh, you know, having grown up as, a, you know, a closeted boy in the South in sort of suburban area, I think you can feel a lot of that pressure to just remain in that state uh, and remain in that um, sort of mindset. Uh, and then having the experience of coming to California, you you see that not everyone grows up with that um, pressure, I think. So it, it really struck me because I'm a Keith Haring grew up in Kutztown, uh, Pennsylvania. And so I think he similarly related to just kind of growing up in a small town where, and I was fortunate, I mean, my parents are incredible and so supportive and my family is amazing, but it's just a different, um, hard to explain if you didn't grow up, but just like a societal pressure that I think um, feels hard to break from, you know? Yeah. Yeah, understood. Yeah, so um, tell us a little bit about the use of color versus black and white. Um, it, sh it seemed like the black and white was your past relationship or yeah. was the protagonist's past relationship. But at the, at the same time, it was, interesting because a lot of times when he was showing the black and white of the past, he was talking about his present relationship that he just met this guy. So. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it started as just a way to kind of 
really show a huge juxtaposition. Um, again, just in artwork, I find such a fascination with like going from black and white to color just as like a really jarring experience. Um, but then I, I, I love this quote that I read. I think it was Madonna who was friends with Keith Haring had this quote that's like, Keith Haring's work is so incredible because it seems so joyous and vibrant. But then if you stare at it for too long, you can get kind of creepy and a little um, <laughs> um, sort of dark. And so I wanted to, as much as I could, show the balance between showing these two stories and show that at the same time, it can be this incredibly joyous and like incredible experience of like falling in love, but then putting that with the black and white, trying to show that it's like, you know, one, a memory, but also, um, yeah, it, it has the potential to be not the best experience. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on a lighter note, um, yeah. where did you find a, uh, a pay phone? No, oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was wild. That was just, uh, we, we filmed the entire thing um, right before the pandemic, uh, like early February. And just in one day around my neighborhood um, in downtown LA, I was in, at USC at the time. Um, and there's just a payphone right there on, uh, I believe it's Hooper. Yeah, and so we found it. And that was another reason that you had to kind of put that scene in color because it's such a vibrant, the phone is yellow. And it's just like, if, if you're gonna look into that, I feel like you gotta put it in. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so last question is about yeah. the music in the film. Um, mm -hmm. It started off with this kind of dissonant piano music, and yeah. then it, it seemed to become more hopeful towards the end. Uh, could you just talk about the music a little bit? Yeah, I think um, one of the themes we were trying to go with in it, and I'll say Zachary Hernandez was the composer. He's absolutely incredible. Anyone who's watching this, please hit him up and hire him. Um, if, I, if I haven't already snagged him for whatever I'm working on next. But the uh, we were, playing with this idea that uh, one of the themes of the film is, you know, not every, everything is not always as it seems and everything is not, you kind of can't trust your original uh, gut reaction to what you're watching because you think he's talking about one relationship and then it comes another one. Um, <coughs> and so, you know, it started this idea that the music was going to be a little like intense and creepy when you're looking at this house and you're like, oh, maybe this is going to be kind of a dark film about like some sort of scary situation. And then it immediately switches to this like love story, and you're like, oh, now I feel I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, a, a, my world has been a little rocked. Um, but then it was super important throughout the whole process, talking to the composer and the actors and the DP and the producers, and just me as a writer and director looking at it, was I knew I wanted to end on a hopeful uh, note because I think, in my opinion, some of the best art in the world is just something that makes you want to, you know go forward and continue and feel like there is a opportunity to um, continue to grow and just that, uh, I don't know, I, it was kind of important to me, although the, I don't know if I would consider this like a coming out story, but in a lot of ways it was me reflecting on a lot of moments in my coming out experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it was really important to me to end it on a note of hopefulness and yeah, that things are, looking up because that's how i felt after going through all that even though the memories can be somewhat painful sometimes it's that uh the future is looking good so that yeah i hope that answers the question yeah that's great um all right so why don't we why don't we shift a little bit over to tenasis um and uh talk about escaping the fragile planet um so i <laughs> i love how your your film uh started off with a COVID-19 disclaimer <laughs> because it was, it was very interesting um, that, you know, all of this is going on and they're wearing masks and all this, and it really had nothing to do with the pandemic. <laughs> and it was actually filmed before the pandemic hit. So, so I guess the question is for you, uh, what was your inspiration for the film considering it wasn't COVID related? <laughs> So yeah, um, my inspiration, I really uh, had to shoot a story about um, a date between two strangers and I wanted to keep it uh, very casual and very, you know, um, improvised with the actors and basically um, practice my skills uh, regarding that. Uh, but um, there has to be something in the story, right? So I had to put like a ticking clock to the story 
because uh, two years ago, and still now, I was kind of obsessed with the concept of time and living in the moment, quotes and stuff like that. Uh, so I thought that, yeah, I can be dramatic like that and the, the ticking clock of the story could be the end of the world. And then I, I, I came across a, a, a photo on, on Tumblr, I think, and it was this kid that was surrounded by a pink fog. It was kind of different, but also similar to the film. At, at, and uh, yeah, I thought uh, m maybe there is this um, sci-fi environmental di dis disaster coming. Um, so if this fog is toxic, then they should wear masks. And if it's toxic outside, people should stay at, at home. So one thing led to another, to the other, and you know, um, uh, then COVID-19 happened and it was like a, a similar situation, especially with the masks and the, and the lockdown. And uh, for the first six months or four until the film came, came out, um, uh, in Greece at least, uh, we were really, you know, nervous about the situation. How will people feel? Will they be, they be triggered, or will they be sick of, of seeing masks, or will, will they be able to see um, anything besides the, the mask, the, the story itself? So it was kind of confusing, but um, yeah, we had to put a disclaimer on to yeah. feel that we're not capitalizing the, the situation <laughs> and uh, separate yeah. ourselves from from COVID-19 and make, and hope that the viewers would see uh, the story for what it is. And um, in the end, uh, what people told me, it was that uh, we could see the story, but also it felt really uh, relatable. And it's yeah. something that I, I couldn't imagine before COVID-19 that... Uh, yeah. Well, I, that was gonna be my next question is, um, <laughs> You know, do you think the film resonates more with the audience now that they've kind of experienced all this isolation and wearing masks and all that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially the first, the first scene. Um, spoiler alert: we see, we see a guy in his room staring the window uh, and staring outside. Uh, for, for, for the for the film, it will be like, you know, okay, let's see what this is, but. After the situation, the COVID nineteen, after the pandemic, it's 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 like we know the story before that. Um, so yeah, it feels, um, yeah, I think the timing the timing was was right and weird at the same time. Yeah, I have to compliment you on the on the locations and that you used. I mean, they were they were so vivid and full of color and life, and and so talk a little bit about the locations, that stairway the the store that they were in like how did how did you come about having that location uh, we, we were scouting Athens for a while um, I don't know we were scout, we were scouting um, I, I wanted to have uh, for other locations I want them to have this retro uh, vintage um, uh, 80s feel and they were old places most of them uh it was like a really vintage um record store and um a one dollar store let's say uh that was the most surreal thing ever it was uh it was a, it, it was a crazy story uh, that that one <laughs> um uh and after it was so um it was so random and the, the shelves were so um full of with random stuff we had to put some stuff out and uh <laughs> Especially in one scene, it was like a, a one corridor was like a dead end, and we basically formed like you know like a train. Uh, like the, the two actors and I, the camera and the, the DOP, and I was behind the DOP and was like, <laughs> and uh, after the day after the um, the, the, the shooting, uh, an earthquake happened in Athens, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Of, of course, everybody was safe in, in the store, but uh, I, I couldn't imagine what would happen with uh, with all the people stuff in there. So, um, so yeah, yeah. And basically, Athens has this kind of feel. It's kind of like um, a dystopian city. So maybe <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> yeah. It's so very pretty in the, um, you know, in a conventional way. 
So take us inside um, how you, people watching this film, I mean, people watching this Q&A may not understand, like, how do you, how do you, how do you create a pink fog? <laughs> like, how do, how does, how does the world of special effects work? Uh, you mean technically? Yeah, just, uh, how did you create the pink fog effect? So uh, let's start with the budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had to shoot two minutes of the film in pink fog because uh, we had, uh, you know, if, if you um, multiply the, the frames, uh, it's, it's the budget we had uh, for each frame. Um, um, so uh, we didn't shoot in the green screen, so we had to uh, crop basically the figures, the, the characters, and every uh, prop in the in the location. Like, um, uh, I don't know the lights, uh, some other stuff, uh, and basically create like a three D um, map of of the place. Uh -huh. So uh, when you put the the, the, the fog as a layer, it knows that, okay, this is close to the camera, this is behind the actors, this is behind this probe, this is the, 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 the very depth of, of the field. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense. I'm trying yeah. my best with no, it. No, that's great. It's very... Okay. Um, so, yeah, we had to... It's called rotoscoping when yeah. we, we do that. It's a, like, handheld thing, like, you paint around the, the figures. And... Um, the, the pink was uh, was was basically a tint we put on we added on um, so yeah and we we went we went we were we were going for this exact pink that was like like a neon but kind of soft at the same time but not very natural um, yeah very, very gay basically <laughs> <laughs> well that's good you need a you need a Pink uh, for for the gayness. Um, so when they when they remove their masks at the end, was that intended to be hopeful, like love can blossom, or was it an act of resistance, or were they somehow like Romeo and Juliet committing suicide together? <laughs> all all of that, I think, <laughs> all of that, basically. Um, yeah, all of that. I couldn't. I couldn't say it better. You know, um, there is a. It's a, it's a romantic act against time, against difficulties, against maybe anything that could happen in public. Some people told me uh, that it was. They, they felt it was a metaphor about how people, how gay or queer people feel safe or unsafe in public spaces. Yeah, it was like they reclaim their own world. Uh, with, with putting the masks, uh, with removing the masks. So I found that very interesting as well. All right. Well, well thank you so much for such an incredible and uh, creative film. Thank you. Um, so uh, let's move on to uh, Ruben. And Ruben made Of Hearts and Castles. Um, it seems to be a story of being broken and healing. Um, and I'm the only one in charge of my happiness. Those were a couple of lines that I, that I, I really loved about it. Um, uh, you also played around with the chronology of the film a little bit, um, kind of jumping backwards and forwards, similar to Matt's film. Um, could you tell us, could you talk about that a little bit and tell us why? Yeah. So basically, the, the way uh, I plan it is like the beginning of the film. If th this is a story, it's one night, two yeah. guys meet one night and what happened chronologically. So what, the way I wanted to tell the story was like the, the story starts in the middle of their time together. Mm -hmm. So as we, we start in the middle and as we see this, we reveal a little bit of what happened before. And I, we see, as we see like the end, we see how they met. And to me, it was very interesting to, to do it that way because I think basically, this is a spoiler alert as well, but it's okay. Only very basically, <laughs> the, when you see the scene where they met, you already know what happened. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was very interesting 
when you know what happened, you are gonna try to find different things in, in them. You know, the way they act, the way they react to each other. I think it's very interesting and it's a different take to be like, oh my God, these people don't really know. If they knew what's gonna happen and the connection they're gonna have, you know, that would be amazing, but yeah. they don't know. But you as an audience know. So I felt it was very interesting, you know, to give that to the audience. And I think that that scene has like a completely different, you know, take if you see from that perspective. And to me, it was very interesting to, to do that. And also because this is our connection and I wanted to have this idea that connection doesn't really have, you know, space or time, it just happens. So it doesn't really matter in one moment of the night. They're always connected somehow. Yeah. Um, you also, um, similar to Tanasis' movie, played around with color. Uh, I, I felt you played a lot around with color there were seemed to be like a lot of reds and greens and yellows. Um, can you talk about some of the, the atmosphere and the and your use of color? Yeah, of course. Um, what I wanted to do was um, when they are in the apartment together, it's almost like, it's like a dreamy moment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to have these this lights, it's almost like neon lights that they could be just street lights from outside and they're mostly red and blue. And they are, you know, like to represent like red passion, uh, blue, you know, like uh, sadness. So they kind of represent both characters. One represents more the red, the other one represents more the the blue. And and also, you know, the the, the body we have veins, which usually, yeah. you know, they are red, red ones and, the, and the blue ones, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I wanted to create that like, each character has its own color and they represent also the body because also this the thing with the heart. Um, I thought, I know it was like risky in a way, like to put, you know, these lights coming out from outside, but I, I personally thought that it would tell so much about these two people and this little environment that they created for, for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, had you... Um, that condition that he had where his heart was in the wrong spot, was it, um, was it something, obviously you'd heard of it before, but did you have mm -hmm. to like, do you know someone who is like that or how yeah. does that work into your story? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I met someone once who had, well, this is also like a big spoiler alert, but yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys watch the film. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, the, the the one of the characters had a condition which he, he was born with his heart on the other side of the of his chest, and I never heard about it. And I met once someone who actually had that, and I remember like literally being blown away, be like, wait, what? <laughs> Like, wait, wait, wait. like, is that really possible? Like, I never heard of it. So he explained to me and everything. Um, I remember I made I made like a mental note, you know, like I'm gonna do a movie with a character with, with the heart on the other side. I don't know what movie is gonna be. I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know the story, but I'm gonna save that character. Cause to me, it just, it just shows so much, you know, like conceptually it's like so much like, yeah. It's, you are, it's, it's like right and wrong at the same time, you know, like, I don't know. It, it was very powerful to me. So that's how it, come, it kind of how it came out, you know, alive in this story. And then what I did, I went through a breakup. So I put, I kind of like the, when I was going through the break and everything where I was feeling, I put this character in a very similar situation that my breakup. Mm -hmm. And I thought how interesting it would be if, if I would have met some that person that I met, if I would have met him when I was actually going through the breakup, you know? Yeah. It wouldn't be like a different experience. And I didn't live through it, but I lived through the movie. <laughs> so, so the big question for me is, will Marcus and Angel ever meet up again? Because ah. they kind of weave on their own and you, you don't really know. <laughs> Uh, okay, this is interesting because I usually leave it up to everyone's imagination. Mm -hmm. All right. I think, um, well, I don't really want to say it, what I think, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you why. 
um, I think to me, first of all, it was about the experience that they had that night. So that's why it was important, mm -hmm. you know, to establish what's going to happen to them, first of all. And also, second of all, I'm developing a feature film. Oh. Or what happened after the short film. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> so now you have to do, yeah, I'm still like in the early stages of, you know, the, the script and everything, but I, I was like, okay, you know, like this short film is like the first 15 minutes of the story, basically. And now what's going to happen with them, you know, are they yeah. going to meet or not, or what this experience is going to mean for them and the rest of their, you know, life experience. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm still developing the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you all the best with the uh, continuing saga. Um, thank you. <laughs> and I want to uh, thank all of you for for joining us here today, um, spending 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 some time and and talking to our audience. So, um, thank you, thank you all, and best of luck with all of your projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.